This is data now. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to explain what Datanaut is, show you how to install and set it up, and some of the things that you can do with it. Datanaut is a set of machine learning tools for Macs that are optimized for low latency and real-time performance. It's made up of over 120 objects across 13 categories, spanning low latency onset detection, onset based in real-time descriptor analysis, classification and clustering, regression and prediction, corpus analysis and querying, synthesis and modeling, audio, data, and CV processing, and a slew of other abstractions that are optimized for low latency applications. Datanaut is based on the last 10 years of my own practice and research using electronics and machine learning in the context of live performance. Over the last three years of development, it was called SP Tools, as some of the original ideas were about bringing the functionality of the sensor percussion software into Max. Datanaut is built on the Flipcoma project, a European Research Council funded project created to bring signal decomposition and machine learning techniques to creative coding environments, including Max, Pure Data, and SuperCollider. So in order to install Datanaut, the first thing we need to do is install Flucoma. So if we come here to Show Package Manager, and at the top right, we search for Flucoma. We'll see it come up as one of the options, and then click Install. Depending on your internet, this might take from 30 seconds to a minute to a couple minutes, but just let that run and install. Okay, so once that's installed, let's make sure that this is on remote packages, and we'll search for Datanaut. And go ahead and click install. And just like with Flucoma, I'll let this run for a couple minutes. Once that's been installed, go ahead and close the package manager and let's just make a new patcher. And along the left here, we wanna right click in this toolbar area and click add data knot. And that'll give us a little D here for the logo and then right click and say, save toolbar as default. And this will let us drag in all the UI objects and everything else that we'll need for the package. Once everything's been installed and set up, if you come to extras here, you can launch the data not overview. So this will be our main jumping off point for getting around the, the package. So on this first tab, we have all the tutorial videos. So if you look here, we can click on one of these and open up one of the tutorial videos um, and that'll play through all of that. Um, there's corresponding tutorial patches. So all of this is something you can kind of browse or see the video separately. Um, next we have categories and use cases. Both of these give you a list of basically all the objects in the package, but viewed through different lenses. So for categories, you can click here and just, I wanna learn more about onset detection. It'll tell you some information there and you can click on one of the patches and it'll launch the help file. And you can do this for each of the categories. So CV processing, there's the info and there's all the relevant objects. Utilities, that's what you got. Synthesis, info, and there's all the synth objects, etc. Now use cases will point to the same objects, but rather than going by category, it'll show you use case. So let's say I have some center percussion hardware. These are the objects that might be most relevant to me. Or I'm an instrumentalist that I wanna create some dynamic accompaniment. I might wanna look at these. Let's say I wanna do some sample playback and I wanna use audio analysis to browse a library of samples. These are the objects, etc. So the idea here is that you can browse all the objects by either the category or the use case. So they'll all point to the same place, but they'll just give you different views of the same information. And as for the patches themselves, so if I come here to onset detection and let's just open the help file for DK onset. So all the help files are structured very similar to this. We'll have a basic tab with some general overview of how the objects work, some information here and a bit of audio that you can play just to have the, you know, the patch do what it does. Then those different tabs here explaining different aspects of the object. This will vary quite a bit for each type of object. And then there's a musical example that does something kind of musically interesting with the patch. Okay, so that's uh, DK onset. Just to kind of show a couple more here. So if I go to um, audio analysis here and let's look at descriptors. Here's a basic tab explaining what the object is, what some of the messages it takes are, how they work, some of the attributes you can set. Here's an example of things. Again, we have all the tabs that'll be um, different for each object. And then a musical example here at the end. 
And finally, let's look at one more here. Let's look at corpus match. So this one's a bit more of a complex um, object. So there's a lot more tabs here. So if I load something up here, it'll show the basic functionality, give you some options here on how you can load and control things. And then all the separate tabs here for the different things that you can do within corpus match. As I said, this is one of the more complicated ones. And finally here, there's an example for loading multiple corpora. So all of the help files that you'll encounter here, both in the categories and the use cases, will all be quite comprehensive in terms of showing you what all the different objects do and a musical way to use them all. And if you do want to learn more about the onset detection, descriptor analysis, and all these other subjects, there's dedicated tutorial videos that you can launch from the tutorials tab. Next up, we have the inspiration tab. So this has a bunch of videos and projects that were made using Datanaut, or in some cases, SP tools that predates Datanaut. Um, so all of these you can click through here, or you can just click on a random link here. So if I just open up here one, let's say this uh, Joao one. Um, this Mason here one is quite good, where he does a long walkthrough through a residency he did um, exploring SP tools. And then there's different performance videos of me using the tools here as well. There's an examples tab here, which we'll look at a bit more detail in the next section. And finally, there's this learning tab. So this has some subsections to it. So the first one here is definitions. So there's a lot of terms in machine learning that are a little esoteric, and if you're not used to them, can be a little confusing. So here there's definitions for a bunch of the commonly used terms in terms of how they're used within data knob. Um, then here we have an algorithms tab. So this will link to the uh, Flucoma page for each one of the algorithms being used, and they're quite comprehensive in terms of um, these interactive examples here. So you can load things and um, get an understanding of how things work. So really good resources for all that stuff. So that's the algorithms tab. There's a bunch of Flucoma tutorials made by the Flucoma crew themselves. So there's those videos there. And then there's Ted Moore, which was part of Flucoma, um, but he has a bunch of standalone tutorial videos that are all excellent. So I highly recommend looking through those. And finally, here are the older SP Tools videos, which um, all the object names have changed. The topics themselves are still relevant. So if you want to learn more about concatenation or real-time filtering or ramps and data processing, these videos are still relevant in terms of the information within them. So the musical examples, this brings together a lot of the musical examples spread throughout the package from each of the individual help files. So you can browse through these by clicking on their description. You can also select a random one, um, but let's just kind of browse a couple here together. So let's say input triggering drum samples with manipulated voice samples. So if I click that, that'll open up the example patch here. And all of the example patches are structured something like this. There'll be an explanation of what's going on. There'll be an audio file that's preset to do something interesting, and then it exposes some of the parameters so you can fine tune things. So if I wanted to explore this with a different input, let's say like my audio input or some of the different files, I can select that here, but for now I'll leave the default. So if I play here. It'll do a bunch of interesting things, and if I click into it, I can read a description of what each subsection is doing, um, and you can follow it all the way down, and each, everything will explain what's going on within the patch. So this is a good way to um, get your head around the library just by looking at examples of how things are put together with it. So you can look here, everything's pretty well annotated throughout the examples. Let's take a look at one more here using this input triggering distorted bass and drum samples. So this is very similar to the um, musical intro at the start with Dinesh the Singing. So I can click in here and look at all the sub patches and see what's what to explain how things are working, how in this case it's a lot of um, random probability and cascades of probabilities to filter things down. So you have some drum events, some bass events, and sometimes they're together, etc. And I can put a different audio here. So let's put this one. And then just the, the relevant parameters for the onset detection. And then if you wanted to, it's also fun to just click a random example and just hit play and let's see what we get. So in addition to these musical examples here in the patch, I thought it might be interesting to explain in a bit more detail some of the musical examples from the teaser video. So if I open up this drum one here, um, so I'll explain a little bit of the physical setup, then I'll explain what's going on with the patch. So there's uh, four drums, each one has a sensor on them. There's two symbols, each one with sensors on them as well. So on the snare, I have a classifier going, 
where if I play the center, that's one class. If I play the rim, that's another class. And then the Kratal is another class. The floor tom has the center and then the rim. The mesh head has the center of the drum, the edge of the drum and the rim, all triggering different processes. The hi-hat has a contact mic underneath it, and the cymbal has a contact mic underneath, as well as a motion sensor. So in terms of each drum, so now the snare center and the hi-hat are both doing the same thing. They're triggering voice samples, and the loudness of the playing at, for each attack determines the length of the sample being played. The rim of the snare is triggering a, a kind of cloud of aluminum foil samples, so you get this like little granular cloud and the Kotala is triggering a sort of reverse voice sample. It's the same voice sample that's being triggered by the hat and the snare, but with kind of a, a long envelope going on. The mesh head has the center of the drum and the edge of the drum, both triggering um, circuit bent drum machine samples. And depending on which section I'm playing, the center of the edge, it'll use different corpus matching with filtered corpora. So it's either the lower sound or the higher pitch sounds and the rim of it is triggering uh, skipping CD samples. The floor tom is triggering like cheesy uh, cartoon sound effects. So the center of the drum is doing pitch down samples and the duration of the sample being played is affected by the dynamics. And the rim of the drum is doing just non-pitched version. So at some point you hear like a boing, that's the, the rim of the drum. The kick drum is doing the low droney melodic uh, loop. And the way that this works is whenever um, I do a loud kick hit, it will move through a sequence of pitches for the uh, bass line and any of the other sources here. So the hi-hat, the snare, the tom, the mesh head can cut off the note. So usually the bass line notes end up being quite short, being triggered by the kick, but then stopped by something else. Whenever I hit the right, it'll trigger a random bell sample. Some of them are short, some of them are a little bit longer. And the motion sensor is mapped to modulation effects on the ride. So combined, that looks and sounds like this. This other guitar sample I'll explain as well. So with this one I took some of the recordings of the acoustic guitar playing, so not exactly this take, and I ran that through a clustering algorithm. So the idea here was to separate the playing into three categories of sound. In the end I think it ended up being ruler type sounds, harmonic sounds, and sort of fretted sounds. It's a clustering algorithm, so it basically just clustered the sounds that were nearest to each other, but in terms of experimenting with the patch that's what it seems like the clustering algorithm pulled out. And I took each one of those categories and I mapped them to a different process. So the first of the processes is, is this descending vocal melodic line. So that was made using a vocal corpus of just a bunch of sung note at different pretty high uh, pitches, knowing that I wanted to do something like this. And then it's doing corpus matching where it's finding the nearest match in terms of timbre and loudness to the guitar playing. And then what it's doing is replacing the pitch. So rather than using the pitch of the guitar notes themselves, it does this uh, descending melodic run, and that runs throughout the course of the whole performance. The other category, it's taking some of the timbre of the playing, uh, specifically the MFCCs, and it's using that to reduce it down to a two-dimensional vector, and then that's being run into a regressor that's controlling a Rungler synth. So all of that is to have a low-dimensional um, input control controlling a complex synth. And then the uh, envelope duration of that is being affected by the brightness. And you'll see that in the bottom left of the, the window when we get there. And then finally, there's another synth that every time there is one of the clusters detected, it randomizes a kind of harmonic spectrum. So the overtone or undertone series, and then the timbre of it, and that's the kind of sustained pad thing. And the um, envelopes of that are also affected by the, the timbre of the playing. So altogether that looks and sounds like this. <laughs> 
So here in the bottom left, you can find the link to the Discord server. So on here, there's quite a few people, um, people asking questions on how to use things, um, sharing new ideas or uh, corpora that they've made, um, people sharing their own videos and music that they make. There's also discussion for um, some ongoing hardware development things, as well as um, alpha and beta testing things here uh, as those things come up. So the, the Discord is a really good place to get involved if you're interested in just you know getting a little bit more behind the scenes or seeing how things develop. And in addition to the Discord server, there's a thread on the Flucoma forum. So this has been going for a while since 2022, a lot of posts there and the same thing on the Lines forum. So both of those communities have um, dedicated threads for um, SP tools as it was before and then data not now. So a lot of questions and videos and a lot of things being shared on those. So that's where all the community stuff happens. So that was an overview of data not explaining what it is, showing you how to install and set it up and showing you some of the things that you can do with it. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.